And if you're a returning guest to JRP, if you know, if you don't know, if you may or may not know, I am an actor extraordinaire. That's being in the bone, ladies and gentlemen, and damn proud of it. Yeah. As I mentioned there, you know, a little impersonation, maybe not the greatest, but a little impersonation and one of, of one of my dear heroes, Mr. Al Pacino. Because he's got a great ass! And your head's all the way up it, you know? Wow. You know, they're all a bunch of assholes. Because you don't have the guts to be who you want to be. You're going to point your fucking fingers and say, there goes the bad guy. Well, what does that make you good? Well, you're no good. You just know how to, how to hide. How to lie. Me? I always tell the truth. Even when I lie. So say goodnight to the bad guy. You're never gonna see a bad guy like this again, let me tell you that. Manolo! Fly, Pelican. Why you always gotta talk to me like I gotta know something? Like I gotta fucking know something? You know what your problem is, putty cat? You, you got nothing to do in your life. Why don't you get a job? Work with blind kids. Anything beats laying awake all day waiting for me to come fuck you, I'll tell you that much. My man Al Pacino, you know, Dog Day Afternoon, The Godfather, yeah, Panic in Needle Park, that's an oldie, I think that was his first film, hadn't seen that one in a minute, you know, Serpico, 88 Minutes, <laughs> um, Dick Tracy, you know, Scent of a Woman, Frankie and Johnny, another odd one, uh, Any Given Sunday, Heat, um, Sea of Love, that might be one of my favorite Al Pacino's, that was a great one, Sea of Love, uh, one of the greatest actors of all time, definitely of the 20th century, Al Pacino. As if we really know what other actors were around pre-20th century. Oh, my favorite actor was Jimmy Doodly Doo from fucking 1802. Oh, he was great. <laughs> Where did you ever see a fucking actor pre-20th century? You know, like, I guess, like, where, who, who? Wasn't there like an acting duo called like the Lunts or something? Or the Lutzes? Or the Lunts? There was like some famous acting family called the Lunts. The Lutzes. They were like known in acting lore as being very famous actors back in the day. You know what I mean? And I guess there was like Shakespeare. <laughs> but aside from that, who the fuck was there post or pre 20th century? But anyway, Al Pacino, one of the greatest actors of the 20th century. And uh, and into the 21st century, you know, he's still rocking it. And why he comes to mind is, I've been watching a lot of films lately, and as I am an actor extraordinaire myself, a lesson that a lot of actors, I think, would do good to take note of is on the idea of gravitas cojones stage presence gravitas now Pacino Al Pacino he's like a magnetic force on stage I mean arguably the greatest film of all time The Godfather well a little bit of film lore film legend you know Uh, movie making legend um, when he got cast for that role the director Francis Ford Coppola 
really wanted him, right? Had seen him on Broadway work. Think he'd seen him in a few small projects. Maybe he saw him in Frankie and Johnny. Or sorry, um, Panic in Needle Park. That was like his, I think his first credited film role, Al Pacino, or among his first. And um, he played like a strung out drug addict, you know, a hype, you know, like a heroin addict. And um, so anyways, he's like, oh yeah, Al Pacino, he'd be great for this park. Michael Part, Michael Corleone, right? Well, I guess the producers and, you know, the production, they're, they're, you know, you know how them dildos are. It's much like any corporation. You know, you got the fucking dickheads in the fucking office who think they know everything and they make all these suggestions. But the people out in the field, like the sales reps, the people in the warehouse, the people on the floor doing the work, the hands-on people, you know, their opinion doesn't mean anything. But, you know, upper management's going to fix the problem. And they get in there and start running their fucking yap. Well, anyway, um, I guess Pacino, you know, having come from like a stage background and, you know, having a vision of his performance, you know, like a master actor, even in his younger days. You know what I mean? It's kind of like inborn. You know what I mean? He saw the character as a little bit more of a slow burn, you know, like Michael Corleone comes back from war. Reunites with his family. He's dating a woman. He's a little subdued. A little bit quiet. A little duck out of water in this gangster family. You know, just kind of a meek and timid, you know, all-American Guido. <laughs> All-American fucking um, Italian-American, right? And, you know, in those times, there was, like, major racism on, like, Italians in America and stuff like that. And, you know, they had their um, struggle finding their place as American citizens, you know. So, you know, he's this young Italian American, fought for his country, engaged to a woman. Um, he's in this crime syndicate family that he kind of wants to separate himself from and be his own man. And. He's a little bit more reserved. So, like, that's really coming through the character in the early scenes of The Godfather. And then, you know, you got these fucking pencil dicks in the fucking front office. Well, what's going on with this Al Pacino character? We need him to be more intense. We need him to be more gangster. We need him to be more like fucking, I don't know, James Cogney. Ah, see? Ah, I'm going to paint the town red. Ah, hey, what are you doing, copper? Ah, see? I'm going ah, to shoot the whole lot of you. Ah, see? Like, he, they wanted him to be a little bit more gangster. I guess, a little bit more intense. But he was playing, you know, a little bit more of a subdued character, a little less gravitas due to the circumstances that the character was in, in the chronological order of the shoot. The Coppola, Francis Ford Coppola, our copywriter, our photocopier, Francis Ford Coppola is like, uh, well, no, no, no. He's the right. He's the right guy. He is the right actor. So they bump up a shooting schedule. They bump the shooting schedule up to that famous scene where, um, you know, Michael Corleone performs his first hit. You know what I mean? Like uh, the the Italian restaurant scene where, you know, he's sitting at the table. You know, and he's like, "Oh, just one minute," and he goes to the bathroom, and you know, he looks under the toilet. And there's a gun and he goes out and he, spoiler alert from a movie like 50 years old, 60 years old or something, but you know, classic, spoiler alert, he goes and gets a gun out of the toilet, you know, he, you know, he goes and sticks his hand in the urinal, comes out with like a fucking 22 or whatever, and he plugs them fucking thugs, you know, shoots them dead right there in the pizzeria, you know, and then there, there was that gravitas, right? Holy moly. And all them fucking Peckerwood pencil dicks in the front office were like, holy fuck, we were wrong. We have the right actor. And boom. Al Pacino, as we know, born, you know, into the cinema mind 
frame. In the world of cinema and film, Star was born. You know what I mean? Al Pacino. That's my dog, you know? And, um, so anyway, um, he kind of put the brakes on that gravitas. He kind of served the character in the right way. And, you know, I guess as a young actor, it's hard to know, or even as an actor in my position, I've been doing it for a minute now. Nobody gives a shit what I do, but I do have some experience. And, you know, you, you come into those moments where you're like, well, I don't know, should I, you know, put the pedal to the metal? You know, flex these chops, show these motherfuckers what I got, you know, what I'm rocking with, put my dick on the table? Or do you serve the character in a little less obnoxious sense? And a little bit more of a subdued, a little bit more of a realism kind of a tone, you know? If you watch film today, you, you see a lot of film actors that are, they're just, they're, they're trying to manufacture this sense of gravitas. They walk on the stage and they're flippant and arrogant and obtuse and, you know, menacing and, you know, well, when I deliver a line, I don't even look, you know, uh, I'm the bad guy villain and I'm playing it off like I'm such a thug and, you know, and, you know, well, uh, I'm dangerous and menacing. And when I say something, I say it and they get mad and they yell, they, ah, they tear their shirt off ah, and they're in the fucking, it's like, it's like a hissy fit. I mean, that's not really acting. I mean, any old dildo can memorize a couple fucking words on a paper. Okay, one, two, three, four, I see a sycamore. Okay, that's my fucking line. One, two, three, four, I see a sycamore. One, two, three, four, I see a sycamore. One, two, three, four, I see a sycamore. Okay, uh, whenever you're ready. One, two, three, four, I see a sycamore. Oh, gravitas. It's not really acting. It's like a hissy fit. It's like chewing the scenery. It's like hamming it up. You know what I mean? And it just is done to dog dick death these days. You know, you'd be watching something on Netflix and it's like, calm the fuck down. What's this guy's problem? Running around, screaming, you know, that's not quite acting. You know what I mean? It's a little bit more... Well, there you go. That's the problem. It's all subjective. Because sometimes that does suit the situation. I was getting a little critical. I was watching like um, this film recently and I started to notice, oh, there's a lot of these type of, I have gravitas actors and they're like hamming it up. But I really, then I realized, oh, wait a minute. It actually suits the tone and the direction of the film. It's like, it's somewhat comedic. So you do kind of want these larger than life personalities to kind of fill out some of that hyperbole of character. You know, it does make sense. So there is a time and a place and there is such a thing as subjectivity. But I'm taking a lesson from the book of Corleone. You know, I'm taking a lesson from the book of Pacino in that Sometimes it's good to reserve that gravitas for when it's needed and not to try to be such a ham and a scene stealer. You know what I mean? And that's a great uh, classic story, you know, like The Godfather. He was about to get fired from that, the most famous film of all time, the greatest film of all time, arguably, arguably, because he wasn't really putting on the pedal, putting the pedal to the metal. He was kind of playing it true to the character as he was trying to craft it and then when it was time for him to step it up and put on the fireworks he did and that was just a good display of I think discipline as an actor and trying to serve the character in the film and not being so needy for that attention there's so many actors that they're always like fidgeting around and making faces and 
You know, they won't have a cool look or a, a flippant way they say something. Or maybe if I smoke a cigarette menacingly, whew, like, it's always some little gimmick other than just like, I guess, like the intentions of the character, the intentions of the writer, dialing it back a bit. But then that gets murky because then that's about subjectivity. You know what I mean? But for my dollar, for my bang for the buck, for what I'm trying to do, I think less is more. Yes. A little discussion on Gravitas. Because he's got a great ass. Your head's all the way up it. I keep on wanting to say, show me the money. <laughs> but, uh, you know, cruise. That's cruise control, Tom Cruise. But um, Al Pacino, he's like the quintessential example of gravitas on film. And I see a lot of actors and actresses these day and age trying to manufacture that, that gravitas. It's really funny when you when you, you look at these little pipsqueak nothings and they're trying to hold it down like they're like, not to say that you can't, but it's like, and, and that's the thing too. It's not about stature. It's not about, oh, okay, Al Pacino is, you know, arguably one of the greatest actors of all time versus Jonathan Ramcharan, an up and comer, an unheard. Of course, I don't have the right to have a certain sense of gravitas on film compared to Al Pacino. It's not about that. It's about what the character needs in that situation to serve the film. It's not about the entitlement of a star brand versus an unknown. It's about what the character needs to serve the film. And a lot of times you see these actors that they're just, they're not playing a character. They're not serving the film. They're not telling a story. It's about them getting their their cheesecake shots you know they want to look you know they want to steal the scenery chew the scenery they want to ham it up and it's like this isn't really what at least for my definition my subjectivity on the matter it ain't what my bang for the buck actor work truly is that's not it that's not it as I mentioned, one, two, three, four, I see a sycamore. Any fucking retard can, can memorize a line and spit it out like an idiot. You know what I mean? It would be the same as if, like, um, for example, who doesn't love a guitar solo, right? But what are they technically doing? They're technically strumming and picking notes on a guitar at a fast pace. So, you know, you hear like some beautiful guitar solo. Wow, the intricacy of it, the arrangement of notes, the 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 flow of it, the rhythm of it. All those bits make it special and unique. It's the craft of sight of the musician. You know? The way they hear it and the way they deliver it. That's what makes it special. I would imagine this is subjective. Okay. But technically what they're doing is they're plucking notes very fast in a certain order and an arrangement. And, you know, we kind of all can match a tempo of, you know, you hear guitar solo. Okay. What if any old idiot picked up a guitar and just started whacking notes away? Oh yeah, it's the same thing. It's a guitar solo. It's trying to have like this gravitas that's like manufactured. Am I making my point? Sometimes it's just better to lay back in the cut. Less is more. Hallelujah. So there you have it, folks. Jonathan Ramcharan, actor extraordinaire. Quick sip of water, boss. Don't mind me, boss. <laughs>